Welcome to INC News World. I'm Naomi Dela Cruz coming to you from the INC Media Studios in Anaheim, California. We've witnessed that pandemic or no pandemic, the construction of houses of worship in the Church of Christ around the world never cease. Let's now head across the world to Bataan, Philippines, where our reporter Michelle Pareto gives us the latest details on one of the most recent chapel dedications. Dito sa aming tahanan, kita-kita po namin. <laughs> Napakasarap po na talagang eh. Habang, habang nandito po ako, sa, dito po sa lukod na ito, mga pamilya, ang mga anak ko po natatanong namin. Kaya nagpapasalamat kami ng maray. Are you looking at it every day? Every morning, I used to come up here and uh, to see that uh, big, uh, beautiful house of worship. Bago po naitayo itong uh, malaki at magandang sambahan, dalawa po ang uh, na, nasaksiyan ko, isang lumang kapilya at ito pong katabi ng malaking kapilya. Enrico, a 70-year-old deacon in the local congregation of Abukai, is a witness to the construction of this grand and magnificent house of worship. Located in Bataan, this glorious new worship building stands tall in the middle of one of the oldest and most historic provinces in the Philippines. For Enrico, not only is he familiar with the history of this local congregation and its past houses of worship, but the work that has gone in constructing this edifice, working as a foreman in his younger years in the Middle East and Micronesia. Bilang matagal na rin naging isang foreman sa pagtatayo ng iba't ibang gusali, na masasabi ko po na talagang napakalaki ng pagkakaiba ng ikaw ay makasaksi ng paggawa ng malaking maagad ng bahay sa bahay. Napaka-selan po ng paggawa ng Iglesia ni Cristo. And as he and the rest of the local congregation of Abu Kai prepare for tomorrow's special event, the dedication of the new worship building, he reflects with excitement and the love that was poured into building this house of worship. Napaka-palad po ng aming distrito sapagkat uh, saan-saan, iba't ibang lokal ang tumutulong at uh, tinutulungan ng ang nasa engineering po ang mga kapatid na natin na nangunguna para itayo ang bahay sa bahay. Walang sinasayang na oras. Sinisikap ko po na makatugon. Gusto ko po yung lakas ko po. Sa gawang pagbabatares, ito po ay uh, sa kapurihan at kaluwalhatian ng ating Panginoon Diyos na nasa lang. This newly dedicated house of worship is able to sit 1,200 worshipers, almost five times more the maximum capacity of the former at just 250. At sunrise, members begin to gather early to attend this holy gathering. Maganda at maayos yung pagkakagawa. Masipag talaga yung mga construction nyo. Masipag talaga sila na as in talagang gabi gumagawa pa talaga sila. And that morning, officiated by the Executive Minister of the Church of Christ, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, a special worship service was held, dedicating this new worship building to the Almighty God. We are so thankful to our Lord God. We dedicated this uh, very nice and beautiful house of worship just timely for our uh, celebration for the 90th anniversary of our district. This success comes from our Lord God. Simultaneous with today's chapel dedication here in Abokai, Bataan, Philippines, the newly renovated house of worship in National City was also dedicated. I'm also very happy po that there was a, a chapel dedication din po um, outside of the Philippines in uh, a city in San Diego County, California po. So I'm very thankful po that uh, the Executive Minister, Eduardo V. Manalo po, went here. It, it feels really good po that uh, the Executive Minister, Eduardo V. Manalo po, is um, concerned with the chapel dedication po both outside of the Philippines and in the Philippines, both, and uh, a strong Christian faith that the members will bring to the church. Among other attendees were members near and far, like a deaconess who moved back to the Philippines from Australia. We stay in Australia for 20 years, po, and we saw the growth of the Iglesia de Cristo, especially in Sydney, and now we came back. We moved back to the Philippines year 2004. We moved here for good, and we have a new house of worship. The church administration loves us so much, and of course, the love of God. 
In Bataan, young and old members alike truly felt the power of the Holy Spirit during today's sacred occasion, like these cousins in Apukai who were eager to be present. Sobrang ganda po ng bagong gusaling sambahan po namin. Na amazed po halos lahat po ng mga dumadaan. And feeling po namin magiging landmark na po talaga siya ng lugar po namin. Pinagpanata po namin na matuloy po ang pagdalaw ng kapatid na Eduardo V. Manalo. At yan po, masaya-masaya po kami na siya po ang nangasiwa ng pagtatalaga po ng gusaling sambahan po sa lokal po namin. Still pandemic po, but still, ka Eduardo, make an effort to visit us. It's a great feeling. We feel his love, his genuine and unconditional love to the brethren. For Enrico, this was the moment he and his family truly longed for, and they are inspired to carry on fulfilling God's work here in Abukai. Kung paano po noon, nasa maliit na bahay-sambahan, ginawa namin ang kasiglahan para kami maging katuwang ng pamamahala sa lahat ng gampanin sa loob ng Banal na Iglesia. Lalo na po ngayon, ang malaki at magandang bahay-sambahan, ipinangkakako po namin. Anong abot namin makakayag, tutugon kami, lalo na po sa pagpapalaganap. Aside from this uh, beautiful house of worship, there's still ongoing project. Because of the help of our Lord God, this church will continue to have more success in order to give glory to His name. The house of worship that was dedicated here in Abukai was just one of many that have been dedicated to the Almighty God this year. With many more yet to come, this work will continue in the Church of Christ, not only here in the Philippines, but around the world. Michelle Pareto for the Iglesia Ni Cristo News Network, Abu Kai Bataan, Philippines. Cleburne, a small suburban town, is among other cities in Texas fighting poverty. Reports show that one out of six residents currently live below the poverty line. But residents would receive a lifeline as one organization's humanitarian efforts would continue providing help to those in need. Michael Robinson has the story. Well, you'd have to include Lake Pat Cleburne because the lake is beautiful. There's just some rich culture. Settling down in Cleburne, Texas for Teresa Kaufman was a life-changing experience. Being a teacher for 43 years and owning this building, the Kaufman Leadership Academy, her focus has always been helping children with specific learning needs. I worked in a small private school for kids with learning differences. And while battling to help children with learning differences, the pandemic would also add more concerns. And so I told the families, I said, look, we're, we're going to go remote if they do that. We'll keep working with your kids, we'll keep teaching, but I don't know what's going to happen. And then the threat of closing her school came to a head. Uh, and, and electricity prices went off the chart. And I just couldn't keep up because we don't collect tuition in the summer. And they threatened to close the stand, to shut us off. But with just a week before having to close her doors, Teresa would receive a monetary donation that would not only keep her doors open, but also extend this same help to other charitable groups and even to the surrounding residents of her school in Cleburne. <laughs> Hello and good afternoon to all. Thank you very much. Is everyone having a good time? I appreciate that our name is connected to your good work. The Felix Juan Manalo Foundation is the charitable arm of the Church of Christ. Its mission is to provide opportunity and equity for individuals in different communities, promote education, ensure socioeconomic well-being, promote environmental awareness, and health improvement for everyone. The good work of the Care for Humanity Project, now in Cleburne, ready to provide timely assistance for the needs of its residents. <laughs> Providing free medical services and care packages for nearby residents like Leia. It was a moment of relief for the struggle she's been facing. And I really enjoy what you guys are doing for the community of Cleburne, um, for our fire department, the education, the school programs. And so I'm losing my home. And um, all my family's in California. But God has blessed me with a job, but it's not enough. 
And for the small town of Cleburne, residents like Denise would see the scope of assistance extended even beyond Cleburne given through the Care for Humanity project. Enjoyed all of it and getting to learn about the different countries and the, you know, seeing the outreach to others. Brethren are so enthusiastic, they are so happy that they're able to participate in this activity. They don't mind the sacrifices simply because it is one of the teachings of our Almighty God that we uphold inside the Church of Christ. And this help was also extended to charitable groups in the community through monetary donations given by the Felix Y. Manalo Foundation, recipients such as Cleburne Education Foundation, Cleburne Fire Department, Fortress, and Kaufman Leadership Academy. And would like to thank Brother Eduardo Manalo, the executive minister, the voice of the Church of Christ, and also Brother Casario de Santos IV. We chose uh, Cleaver in Texas because of its present situation. At present, 13.78 of its people are living in a below poverty level. We are on the same battlefield now. People are experiencing hardship wherever they are. So when the administration decided that the care for humanity being conducted more diversified, we have seen a lot of people who are so happy, people who are so appreciative of what the Iglesia de Cristo through the FYM Foundation have done for the sake of them. Um, I didn't know anything about Care for Humanity, um, but now I'm so glad I do know. It's an amazing organization and we're so appreciative. And to hear the statistics that Brother Javier spoke about in Cleburne just proves that we are a very needy community and we have lots of families who are struggling love that there's a church that is so ingrained and knows in tune with what the neighborhood needs and what the city needs and is, is so intentional about meeting those needs. I, I just think that's beautiful. You don't see that in a lot of churches, you know, that are really out in their communities. And I, I just, that really struck me today. Even with representation from the city, the district attorney's office, even Judge Robert Shaw, they felt gratitude that the Care for Humanity project reached Cleburne about being a citizen of this community and just appreciating, you know, people coming in to help. A lot of churches and a lot of people throughout that try to help with, you know, often not with as many resources as that y'all have access to. And so just when we get others, it just inspires. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming and serving the community of Cleburne. Um, as a Clebornite myself, I see that there are needs and for you to be able to come from all over the United States to come and help serve people that you don't know, but following God's direction to come and serve and to love and give encouragement and to show light. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. But this wasn't the first time that humanitarian efforts reached Cleburne. In 2021, part of the Worldwide Aid to Humanity event, residents also saw the response of care for those in need, all stemming from the mandate of the executive minister to bring aid to Cleburne. We praise our almighty God for this care for humanity event here in the state of Texas. His love and concern to the church administration is truly evident. And because of the mandate of uh, the executive minister, Brother Eduardo B. Manalo, to the president of uh, Felix Y. Manalo Foundation, Brother Glicerio P. Santos de Ford, to further intensify humanitarian efforts like this, it goes to show that we are fulfilling what God commands to love thy neighbor and help them, especially in times of uh, need. Efforts even resulting in residents wanting to learn more about the Church of Christ, like Leah, and even as the school looked forward to even holding Bible studies here in Cleburne. One of the guests, her name is Leah, and did not want to leave until she actually spoke to a minister. And I was able to speak to her and told her about a little bit about the church, gave her copies of our God's message, and informed her that starting this Wednesday, we will have Bible studies here. And as the Care for Humanity project has also introduced the true faith to residents in Cleburne, it also gives Teresa the hope to look forward for greater things for her school. What we see is Christ's work. I mean, this is what he told us to do, is take care of each other. 
and and feed the poor and and so um, I, I definitely see God's work through the Church of Christ. I'm going to sleep a little easier tonight from the wonderful donation. And with this assistance, today residents in Cleburne have felt the lessening of the burden of their daily living. And for Teresa and her school, their doors remain open so that children and families in Cleburne can continue thriving all due to the Care for Humanity Project. Michael Robinson, Iglesia Ni Cristo News Network. Keep up with the latest news and inspiring stories of INC News World by hitting the subscribe button to the INC Media YouTube channel.